Hello YouTubers, welcome to part two of my video series on how to best prepare yourself for the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. Let's get started. The agenda, as a refresher, this is part number two because I did two videos for the first part. The next video will be study materials and tools and the rest as you can see on this agenda for the program. Let's begin part two. First, I will start by going over the answers to the five questions that I gave at the end of the last video. Question one, does every state require that your experience be signed off by a professional engineer or PE? The answer is false. Although some states, maybe even the majority of them, do require a PE, there are states that do not. They prefer that you have your actual supervisor sign off on your experience as an engineer. Question number two. How many minutes on average do you have to answer each question on the computer-based FE examination? Pick the closest answer. Well, this one is going to take a little bit of math. Simple math. Since the total test time is 320 minutes and the total number of questions is 110, counting both morning and afternoon. Therefore, you have 2.909 minutes per question. So the nearest answer is three. Question number three. Which organization provides a primary source of information indicating that you can sit for the FE test without experience after graduating college? The correct one is ABET. They're the organization that provides the accreditation for engineering and technology programs throughout the country. And all of the state boards accept that as proof that you've met the requirement to sit for the FE test. So if your school shows up and your program, you're good to go. Question number four. Which state does not provide automatic PE reciprocity to residents of every other state? The answer is none. Although some states make it easier to earn your PE license in that state, when you already have a license for another state, none of the states give automatic reciprocity. But the best place to check is with your board on their website. Question number five. Which of these items will most likely be disallowed within the Pearson View test room? This is a little bit tricky, but the correct answer is the Fitbit bracelet. It is an electronic device, and they are worried that electronic devices can actually be used to communicate with somebody outside the test room and or provide a means of copying the screen or your notes and thereby capture specific test questions and their answers. Though a hearing aid is also an electronic device, as long as you have a prescription, that is acceptable. Did you meet the time? Since you have only 2.9 minutes on average to answer a single question on the FE exam, did you get all five questions answered within 14 and a half minutes? Did you get at least three answers correct? These were not difficult questions. I'm giving you the full amount of time you would have if, if they were, but you should have done this in significantly less than that. But that aside, the second part is actually more important. Three correct answers. That would be a 60% achievement level. Most everybody who has done any work with the FE exam have come to the conclusion that if you get 60% on the FE exam, you will pass that test. The FE screen layout. Once you're seated, you will be asked to watch a short instructional video and then sign an agreement. You must electronically sign it. Otherwise, the test is done for you and it will end. Don't expect any refunds but you will immediately be escorted out the room by the proctor because they can see what you've answered. The proctor will also provide you with special erasable sheet booklets. These are sort of like paper-based whiteboards 
although the ones I got were actually yellow like you know legal pad yellow pages I was actually given two books and a couple of the marker pens that you must use you can't use anything else while you're using those sheets they should instruct you that if you need more of these to raise your hand and they will replace one or both of them with a fresh book I didn't have to do that during my test but you may but be aware if you've written something down that you'd like to have for the rest of the test at least that part of it then don't turn that book in or at least copy it over before you do now what I'm showing in the screen here are some replicas of these pages that they will provide for you during the test the first one is actually a product you can buy from PPI they're the same organization that does the the books for studying and practicing for the FE test I'll put the link to that down in the bottom of this video in the notes section the second one is something I bought off of Amazon and it is similar although it's hard copied and it has not only white pages that are very thick but it also has clear pages as well both of these are cleaned with isopropyl alcohol now you will not be provided that inside the test room important do not try to erase anything on these laminated sheets that would be a waste of valuable time cross out anything that you want to ignore in figuring out the answers you're going to have plenty of space on these pages and you can always ask for another one before you hit the start button which would actually start the test for you make sure you have the small desk that the computer is on organized find some room on either the left or the right of the video screen to lay out your calculator the laminated sheets and markers they provided and a straight edge if you happen to bring one I didn't but you could or your hearing protection if you brought that as well when you are done get everything nice and straight and organized you will need to click the start button to actually begin the test once you do that the on-screen digital clock will start clicking down from 5 hours and 20 minutes or 320 minutes total the race against time is on remember critical speed is everything on this test the following slides show a fairly accurate screen representation of how the test will appear I built it from memory from the test that I took it's not hundred percent but I think it's close enough to give you the feel of things on the right side of the screen that will show the problems that you need to answer and you'll have little bubble buttons that you would select the answer with only one of those bubbles can be clicked at a time the left side will display the PDF version of the NCEES FE handbook I highly suggest that you try your best while you're practicing for this test to have that PDF up on the screen and try to use the computer to look for what you need to look for be aware though what I've told you in the previous part you're not going to have the same type of reader that they provided the PDF reader you're going to have probably Adobe or something similar which is much easier to use there is a button on the lower right that allows you to move to the next question so once you've answered this question move on to the next and there's also a button I believe near the bottom that you use to flag a question for later review and I'll talk about that more later you will be unable to back up during the first pass through all of the questions this is a sample of the screen you see the PDF image on the left you see a problem in the right and as I recall it had that gray background to it you see the clock top center shown one one hour 59 minutes and 31 seconds and this is problem 20 of 57 this tells you immediately how many problems you now have in this first part of the test again this is a made-up question I made it up completely off the top of my head so this is not one that I recall from the test believe me I would not do that those the an the answers are A through D in this example what I'm not showing you here is the geometric type 
test questions that are relatively new to the FE exam where you use the mouse to drag stuff around to answer the question. I mentioned that in the first video. But select your answer. If you're not sure, and I'll talk more about that later, you would flag it. And then you hit next to see the next question. Based on the number of questions shown in the first part, determine how many minutes you want to spend out of your measly 320 minutes on the first half of the test. Now that'll be partially determined by how many questions you're going to have. Is it more or less than the midpoint of 55? I had 57, so I gave an extra minute for that one. Calculate what the clock would be at that point. They, it doesn't count down the way you think. It doesn't count down for each half. It's one clock that counts throughout the test. You decide when to stop it, as I'll describe later. But whatever time you use up during the first part is going to not be available to you after your snack slash lunch period. So be aware of that division of time. Anyway, write that time down in the booklet somewhere one of your booklets so that you can have it in front of you. I would subtract 10 minutes from that and I'll explain more of that later. Once you have gone through all of the questions the first time, whether or not you answered them all, you will be able to tap a button at the bottom to see a summary sheet. The clock, however, will continue to count down until you hit the submit button, which has a, which appears on the summary sheet. And I believe it also appears on the last question in that particular part you're on. Submit finalizes, so be careful. We'll talk more about that. Here's an example of the summary sheet. And as you can see, it has yellow and red. That's because I flagged some, they appear yellow, and I did not answer some. So ans unanswered questions appear in red. Anything that I did not flag and did answer appears with no background other than the gray. You can now click on any one of these problems and go right back to it. However, be aware that from that question, you could either come back to the summary sheet, because you'll have a button for that, or you can move on to the next question in sequence, your choice. Notice the clock, though. I gave an example here of how it's going to tick down continually as you're looking at this. On this screen, you'll be able to identify, as I said, which ones are flagged, they're in yellow, and which ones are not answered in red. And I mentioned already about clicking on them. The important thing here that I didn't mention was, while you go back and forth, the clock keeps ticking. Once you are satisfied with all your answers, tap the Submit button to lock in your answers and stop the main clock. So the main clock that started off at you know, 5 hours and 20 minutes, it will stop at that point, but a second clock will then start. That's your 25 minute break timer before the second half of the test starts. You should raise your hand, although the proctor is probably already on their way over because they see what you did on their screen. And they'll escort you, they'll tell you what, to, what you can leave behind, what you, have to, what you can take, and then you will be escorted out the room. You can go to your locker, get your snack. If you want to switch calculators, that would probably be the time, assuming you took it out with you. You must return prior to the break timer ending. You see here two clocks running. The top one is the one that's frozen, the overall time left. In this example, one hour, 58 minutes, 43 seconds. But I have 22 minutes and nine seconds at this instant left for a break. The test will automatically resume once that timer has expired. So be aware of that. Whether or not you're back in time, whether or not you hit that little button on the bottom that says continue to part two. The second half of the FE exam. Once you get back from your break, you can either wait until the break timer hits zero, that's only the break timer is, gonna, is counting down, or tap the button at the bottom to immediately start the second part of the test. The second part of it will have the number of questions needed to reach the total of 110. So whatever you had remaining to reach 110 is what you'll have left in the afternoon. And this is my test strategy. I suggest you take advantage of both indicator colors available to you on the summary page. Very important. As you work on each question and the initial pass through of the questions, if you are able to eliminate at least two wrong answers, 
with an 80% certainty that your answer is correct, and that's a judgment call, how do you feel about the, the answer that you chosen of the two you, you couldn't eliminate? Do not flag that question. It's done. Move on to the next question. If, however, you are able to eliminate two answers, but you're not so sure about it, which one you picked of those two remaining ones, then flag that question. It'll appear yellow in the summary sheet. However, finally, if you cannot eliminate two answers, if you cannot eliminate one or none, leave that one blank and deal with it later if you have the time. For the second pass through, now this is for each half, you're going to now go a second pass through it. Try to revisit all the ones you flagged. However, keep an eye on the time clock. Do not go past 10 minutes prior to reaching the stop time you decided on for part one. It doesn't matter so much for part two, but you should not go past the less than 10 minutes left in the whole test at that point. And finally, take a quick look at the summary sheet and see if one letter seems least used during that part. Now I have read, and I believe since it makes sense, the objectives are they don't want anybody to go in there and answer the same letter for all questions and get any more than 25% right. So that the best theory is that they have a computer program that shuffles the answers properly so that they are evenly distributed through the entire test. So this little counting on the first half is not going to be as accurate as counting on the second half, assume, assuming you carried over the counts. Answer all unanswered question with that same letter that you see appears to use be used less frequently. This way you'll be playing the percentages. If you have guessed right in terms of the least used one, then you will probably get more than 25% of those right. I found that letter B was the case in mind for both the first half and the second half. And by the way, I did add them up at the end. I had about 10, 15 seconds left and they were fairly evenly divided. I think there was one extra B, but then I could have gotten that one wrong. You never know, right? Finally, at the end of part two, let the test timer just run out. I'm assuming you're not dealing with several or more minutes on it because I would still go back and double check some of those answers I wasn't sure about. Maybe take a look at a couple of the, the red ones as well. If you are prone to stress issues, like I am, lower your blood pressure by taking a few deep breaths. If you are drink drinking age in your state, I suggest you go to a place where you can have a couple of relaxing beverages but make sure you don't get behind the wheel of a car afterward. That evening, try to spend a few minutes summarizing your experience with that test in writing. In particular, try to remember some problem types that you had issue with. Now, maybe this is something for whatever reason, I had a couple of these, that it did not appear in any of the reviews that you did. And it doesn't look that hard. You think that given enough time, you might have been able to answer them. Well, those are the ones to write down and now look up and find examples of it online somewhere. So you're ready for the next one, just in case you didn't pass. Congratulations, the test is over for you at that point. The next video that I do in this series will be on study materials and tools. I call this next part lock and load for some late night study evenings. And since I didn't do any test questions this time, be ready the next time for those questions. Well, good luck. I wish you the best. Thanks. If you see any videos here that help you or that you like, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything. Thank you.